Amendment, which was last signed and ratified in 1986. All right, it's re-signed every 50 years. That it's the treaty that is the actual law of the land. Now, that being the case, how do we make that treaty work for us? We always say they are not honoring the treaty. This is the oldest treaty in the world. Did y'all know that? And it's the only unbroken and longest standing treaty in the world. Did y'all know that? Now, that treaty protects us. You need to go get a copy of it, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1787, all right? Signed by the Emperor of Morocco. Actually, he signed it in the year, in the month of Ramadan, in the year 12, 1201. All right, which translates into the Gregorian calendar year of 1787 because they added 586 years to our calendar. All right, so in terms of using the law of the land and when you express these things to them, you don't even have to uh, go into a lot of detail about it because those who rule and those in government and those who sit on those judicial benches know what this doctrine is and they adhere to it. But the problem is there's not enough of us standing up defending it. Okay, how to correct the issue. The people must, must be in their proper person. The people must act in their sovereign capacity. As the brother said earlier, how do you behave as a sovereign? How do you behave as a sovereign? You behave as a sovereign by not getting so upset and ranting and raving and causing a scene. There's no need to do any of that. As I said in the courtroom, as in with law enforcement and any of that, there's a language of silence. Just like the mummers who march down Broad Street every New Year's and they're playing it up and playing it up. What does mummery mean? Silent mockery. Who are they mocking? Us. All right, but they understand the language of silence and they, and they deal in it all the time with their secret signs and symbols. But don't be angry with them for using these things. Why not? We taught it to them, okay? Don't be angry with them because they have gotten out of control with the power that we gave them. We created these people. We can't now, now turn around and say, now we don't want you, now you know, go off someplace else and this and that. And if you know the history, you know that the Moors, what the Moors did to these people when they were first created. The Moors considered them subhuman. They couldn't speak Latin, which is our original language. They couldn't go to school. They couldn't own land. They couldn't vote. They were totally disenfranchised. And this is why the Moors commissioned, ha, um, commissioned Benjamin Bay, who you know as Benjamin Banneker, who is also Benjamin Franklin, by the way, okay, to teach these people the science of government. He did that for a select few. Unfortunately, it couldn't go and spread as widely as it should have been. Now we have a situation on our hands where we as Moors refuse to be who we are. In the civil rights movement, there were those who led it who were paid to get us off our square, and we agreed to be there. We agreed to be called black, and we're proud of it, remember? Now, who could tell us any different? Now, the Europeans have a dilemma because they've lied to us so much and we have forgotten so much that if they stand up to tell us the truth, would we believe them? The majority of the people who call themselves African-American right now, if you tell them they're not from Africa, they'll give you hell. Right. Am I right? Yes, we are. <laughs> now, can you imagine they're getting, you're getting that feedback from them? Can you imagine what they would say to a European who now try to tell them they're not from Africa? You understand? Now you've got Bill Gates who's given a billion dollars to the United Negro College Fund, you know, to keep more Negroes out of their sovereign capacity and they jump right into the boat, right? Play it up to the hilt. Oh, what a great thing he's done. You know, they love him to death. Now, if the Moors try to stand up and say who the man really is, you got all these black people who are gonna criticize you. Leave the man alone, they'll say. All right, but we know the truth. So we correct the issue only by standing on our square, whether we're Moors or whether we're not. All right? Now, let's talk about what law really is. Law is based upon the science, the science of astrology, astrologic. Don't let anybody ever tell you that astrology is for entertainment purposes. It is the science that rules. It is the science that governs. As I said to you, 
what Allah is, Allah. All law. Do we praise Allah? Absolutely. Do we praise Christ? Absolutely, because what, what, not who, what is Christ? Christ is the great I am. And if you know what Islam means, let me tell you this. I, self, law, am, master. I am the master of my own fate. I am all law. All right? When you walk into the courtroom and you know these things, trust me, you get a different result. When they ask you your name, you never say, my name is. That's a label. What do you say? I am. I am. You never swear on the Bible. You affirm. You affirm on the Bible. And as Sister Thanai here said to me, oh, they try to trick you. They'll say, do you swear or affirm? No. You just say, I affirm. Because what? I am and who you are. And that's your status. And nobody can compete with that. Nobody can take that from you. And no matter what paperwork you submit to a court, what is the most important thing is when you walk into a courtroom and you speak the law. And when you speak the law in a courtroom, guess what? You speak it into existence because a thought is an activity. It's real. It may not be something you can touch, but as soon as that thought transpires into a word, it becomes a spell. That's why they call it spelling. You get it? Now, law is based upon the zodiac. Now, when you walk into a courtroom, there's all kinds of things going on. There's sacred geometry going on in the courtroom. In fact, the courtroom is set up according to sacred geometry. All right? And here's what happens when you're in there. The judge is at the top of the triangle. Got it? When you walk in there, and as I had shared in another class, to deal with marriage, it's the same thing. And I'm going to talk about that also in a minute. You walk in there, and when you appear, never tell the court that you are appearing. Look in the law dictionary and find out the definition of appear. Never do that. You go into the courtroom and you make a what? A special appearance. Not general. That will get you in trouble every time if you appear in a courtroom. And all of these little nuances, they know these things. And they are put there to trap you who don't know. So when you walk in there and you're on your square, being on your square means to know these things and not to walk in the courtroom uncomfortable. Because when you know them, you have no reason not to come to court, do you? You want to be there because you want to make a special appearance to challenge the jurisdiction of the court. Why? Because of the lack of status. And once jurisdiction is challenged, it must be proven for the record. It must be proven for the record before the court can proceed. Do you understand? The judge must come with his nationality papers. He must come with the flag of the country, not the nation state that he represents. That United States flag with the 50 stars, which now should be 48 because there are only 48 states. Did y'all know that? 
Two of them dropped out, Hawaii and Alaska are no, more, are no longer states. Did y'all know that? They're no longer states. And those in government and those who sit on those judicial benches know what this doctrine is. And they adhere to it. But the problem is there's not enough of us standing up defending it. Okay? How to correct the issue. The people must must be in their proper person. The people must act in their sovereign capacity. And in the year 12, 1201, all right, which translates into the Gregorian calendar year of 1787 because they added 586 years to our calendar. All right? So in terms of using the law of the land and when you express these things to them, you don't even have to uh, go into a lot of detail about it because those who rule, as the brother said earlier, how do you behave as a sovereign? How do you behave as a sovereign? You behave as a sovereign by not getting so upset and ranting and raving and causing a scene. There's no need to do any of that. As I said in the courtroom, as in with law enforcement and any of that, there's a language of silence. Just like the mummers who marched down Broad Street, which was last signed and ratified in 1986, all right, it's re-signed every 50 years, that it's the treaty that is the actual law of the land. Now, that being the case, how do we make that treaty work for us? We always say they're not honoring the treaty. This is the oldest treaty in the world. Did y'all know that? And it's the only unbroken and longest standing treaty in the world. Did y'all know that? Now, that treaty protects us. You need to go get a copy of it, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1787, all right? Signed by the Emperor of Morocco. Actually, he signed it in the year, in the month of Ramadan, 